Andre Corbello has been out. I, I mean, they really struggled with Andre Corbello early in the season. He's been out. They've went on a pretty crazy run. They sit alone in first place in the big 10 right now. Well, not alone with Michigan state. Um, but they've got a big one coming up. They're going to play Purdue Monday of next week, a Purdue team who they are two games ahead of in the conference standings right now. Sweeney, if I told you that Illinois is my runaway favorite to win the big 10, am I crazy for that? I think runaway would feel a little crazy. I don't think there's anyone who's going to run away, with, run away with this league, but I wouldn't be surprised if they win it. I, and I don't, I don't think I'd argue with someone who said they're the favorite right now. I mean, look, Kofi is so dominant. And I mean, we, we, we remarked on this before we got on the air. Uh, Kofi is just like so ginormous. I mean, he may, Musa Diabate, when you watch him play against literally anyone else, looks huge. You're like, holy, you know, how is this guy a freshman? He looked like a toddler next to Kofi Comer. Like his arms were like half the width of Kofi's arms. Kofi dominated on the inside. He got, you know, they, Michigan kept sending different bodies. It didn't matter. Um, he's the centerpiece to a national title caliber team. There's no question. Um, and, and when Plummer and Frazier continue to play with the confidence that they've played with, really, I think, I think a huge turning point for this team confidence-wise was the Arizona game. And it sounds weird to say because they were starting to figure it out before Plummer was start, starting to hit shots. But I think there was a, a big confidence boost for these guys of – our guards can go win us a basketball game or give us a shot to win a basketball game. Cause Kofi had maybe the worst game of his Illinois career or certainly the last two years. I mean, he has been so good. He was awful in this game in, in many ways. And I just felt like Frazier and Plummer gave that team so much confidence because of the way they were hit, able to hit shots. And, and I remember Brad Underwood in that press conference afterwards said, like, we have to be tougher. We have to be tougher. We don't really want to defend right now. Like we're not, you know, we don't have anyone other than Trent that wants to go out and guard. And I was like, man, you just carried, you know, you just went to the wire with a top five team, a team that's undefeated at the time. Like, and that's your reaction. We're not tough enough. And I think they had a layoff after that. They played a bye game. They kicked Missouri's teeth in. And I think ever since then, they've come back and they've had that chip. They've had that edge. They've had that toughness. And you combine that with the talent that they have, a pretty darn good basketball team right there. Carter, you're a Michigan State fan. If I asked you, as a Michigan State fan, are you more afraid of Illinois or Purdue? What's your answer? Hmm. I am still more afraid of Purdue. I'm still more afraid of Purdue. Um, I will not fully get out on Purdue just because of the, just the pure talent. Like, despite the defensive inefficiencies that they had and the defensive kind of lapses that they have, like, it's just so hard to ignore this team's talent. Like, it's completely unfair that as a big man in the Big Ten, you play the first five to ten minutes of the game against Zach Eady, and then your break is that they bring in Travion Williams. Like, that is – like, that's got to be demoralizing to see Travion Williams walk to the table to sub in after you just got done battling with Zach Eady. But to speak more on Illinois, I think that it's just working out extremely well because – and this is like no slight on like a player like Andre Corbello because I think he's a good basketball player, a good college basketball player. I just think that right now they're running great offense around who their best player is and who their most dominant player is, and that's Kofi, right? They basically have a dominant force on the inside, and then you surround him with guys that are shooting either 40% or above 40% from three or damn near close to 40% from three. So if you send a double, all Kofi has to do is kick out to 40% three-point shooters if you or 40% three-point shooters. If they don't send a double, Kofi's scoring. Like, it's great offense. And then Trent Frazier, I just – I know he gets a lot of credit um, from a lot of guys across college basketball. But, I mean, what he's done this year on both sides of the ball has just been, just been great to see. I mean, that's the great part of college basketball when guys come back. And it's just like he's just – he's in that mode. He's like, this is the last year. I'm locking up on defense. I'm hitting shots. And he's been running the pick and roll beautifully as well. I mean, like a pick and roll with him and Kofi is very hard to stop because if you don't get over that screen, Frazier's knocking it down. If you get over, you hit Kofi on the roll. I mean, there's just so many options. The offense is working extremely well. And, I mean, they're playing really good basketball right now. Credit to them bouncing back from the tough games they had at the start of the year. Yeah, Trent's so a dog. Trent's a dog. I just yeah. want to put that out there. Like, oh. I, I, we talked about his offense and everything he does there. We didn't mention, like – he locks dudes down every single game. Yes. And no one, like, 
I don't think people realize the amount of effort it takes to be as good as he is on defense with the amount of load they're putting on him on offense and the amount of minutes he's playing. Like he is playing, I think like 35 minutes a game at this yeah. point. Yeah, no, yeah, he, if played I, 35, if I, he played 35 today against Michigan, 38 against Nebraska, all 40 against Maryland. He got, got, got off his feet a little bit against Minnesota. He played 28 minutes. But, like, in the last eight days, he's played 35, 38, and 40 minutes in his three games. He's balled out in every single one of them. And, oh, by the way, he's a big-time defender. Like, that kid is the most underappreciated player in college basketball right now. Facts. He gets no respect. Facts. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of talk amongst Big Ten circles of, like, who's the best backcourt because there's all these front court stars, but who's got a good backcourt in this conference. And look, obviously the answer, if you're going to count him as a guard is whoever has Johnny Davis. Uh, if we're going to count Johnny Davis as a wing, I'd put all my money on the Illinois backcourt because to all your points about Frazier, I would argue that Alfonso Plummer might be the best shooter in the country. I mean, this guy's shooting seven and a half threes a game at a 41% clip shooting 97% from the free throw line. I have seen Alfonso Plummer tape. I had seen him at his prior stop. I never thought this guy would make the impact he's done at Illinois. Uh, and it's going to be very fascinating to see how they bake Andre Corbello back in as soon as he is fully uh, 